Hello, everyone. I'm back to do a quick lecture on freedom of association and due process for constitutional law. These are part of our individual rights. This is my third video on individual rights. So let's talk about freedom of association. Uh, freedom of association recognizes an individual's right to freely associate with other individuals and groups. So basically, I've seen lots of MBs on this where they are associating with an, uh, another group and someone's trying to stop them from doing, the government's trying to stop them from doing that, which is not allowed because we can associate with other groups and they can't be picky about which ones. Freedom of association continued. This applies only to freedoms protected by the First Amendment, not all freedoms, just the freedoms protected by the First Amendment. And it's not for social purposes, okay? So freedoms protected by the First Amendment, like religion, speech, all of those. Must be a compelling government interest. When we see these words, compelling government interest, I think I've done enough videos for you to know this is obviously going to be a strict scrutiny, right? Strict scrutiny. That cannot be achieved by less restrictive means. It must be nearly tailored in order for the government to prevent freedom of association. Strict scrutiny. Okay, if you need the strict scrutiny elements, I also have other videos on those. And we have due process. Oh, that's the end of uh, freedom of association. That's pretty much all we have to know. Uh, just write up your argument for strict scrutiny and get, give your conclusion on that if there's a freedom of association essay. But this is mostly I've seen on MBEs. Due process clause. Now, this is the rule. Binds the state through the 14th Amendment. Okay, binds the states. This is a little bit different. I like our other ones. Binds the states through the 14th Amendment. Okay, states through the 14th. And the federal government, people get confused about this, federal government through the Fifth Amendment. So due process applies to 14th and Fifth Amendment. If it's the states, we're going to use the 14th Amendment. And if it's due process based on federal government, then we're going to use the Fifth Amendment, okay? And there's two types of them, substantive due process and procedural due process. And I'll go over both of those. SDP, substantive due process limits the government's ability to regulate certain areas of human life, such as life, liberty, or property, okay? Now, when we do SDP, we need to look, are they, is the government infringing on a fundamental right? Or is the government infringing on a non-fundamental right? And it depends on if it's a fundamental or non-fundamental, and that's where the different rules apply, and I'll go over those for you. First look for what are they infringing on, fundamental or non-fundamental, and then you'll apply those rules once we learn them here. So if it's um, SDP based on a fundamental right, now your fundamental rights are usually marriage, living with one's family, childbearing, child rearing, domestic travel, voting. I've got some others here I can read to you in my, I'll get these out real quick. Um, Procreation, contraception, abortion, right to attend private school, familial right, right to interstate travel, right to vote, right of the mentally ill treatment, and right to reject medical treatment, religion of freedom, freedom of speech, all of those are considered your fundamental rights. So if they're infringing on that and you're involving SDP, then these are the following elements, and I'll tell you what those are. First, you need to look, is it a fundamental right? And if it is, then we continue. So if it's a fundamental right, of course, we're going to use strict, strict scrutiny, SS. Um, the government action must be necessary to achieve a compelling government objective. Now, for MBEs, there are special rules to abortion. So when you guys do your MBEs, be really careful with abortion. There's a lot of different special rules for that. You'll learn them quickly. But we don't need that for essays, but for some of the MBEs, okay? So if it is a fundamental right, we are focusing on strict scrutiny, okay? So obviously, the burden is going to be on the government here. Remember, strict scrutiny burden is usually on the government. Hard. Strict scrutiny is one of the hardest ones to pass for a fundamental right, okay? Now, if it's a non-fundamental right, something that's not part of the fundamental rights, then you're going to, this really applies just to everything else. That is not a fundamental right. It applies to everything else. Typically, social and economic regulations, such as education and employment, and I've seen lots of MBs on this, too, based on education and employment. That would be a non-fundamental right. And you're going to use the rational basis test which is rationally related to achieve a legitimate government objective. Now, remember, the burden here is on the challenger. Anytime you use the RBT test, it's on the challenger. Burden is on the challenger. Okay, which are some MBEs, they trick you on that. 
Then we have the second type, which is procedural due process. This requires the government to use fair process before intentionally depriving a person of life, liber liberty, or property. Now, basically, this is the notice in a hearing to be heard, a hearing to be heard, okay? So I'll go over those in a second. Now, liberty interests include right to drive, right to raise a family, property interests, real property, personal property, public education, government employment, government licenses, government benefits. And the government benefits are only if they've already been receiving them. So if they're not receiving the government benefit, then the, this is not a procedural due process issue, okay? It's not a property interest yet. It's only if they've been receiving them. So these are the, and then we go to procedural due process continued. Now this is the right to a hearing and notice, okay? Right to a hearing and notice. The court will weigh individual's interest versus the government's interest. Um, use the facts and argue both sides. And you must pick a side. Your conclusion must have a pick a, pick a side. The court will side with so-and-so because of so-and-so. So okay, so that's it for our, I'll do a little written, little approach after I get done with involuntary servitude. So we're gonna go right into involuntary servitude, which is also an individual right. 13th Amendment, applicable to both the state governments and private actions. Remember, 13th Amendment is applicable to private actions also. Um, this means no slavery, slavery or involuntary servitude. Involuntary servitude is meaning you cannot force someone to work for you. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, we're gonna be at my drawing already. So this is my DP drawing, I'll show you it. Let me log um, out of this and then show it to you. This is my approach, how I do it. This one's really quick. So if you get a question on this, you just jot this down really fast and follow it. So we have here. Um, I put on the top DP. I'm going to give my rule. From my rule, I'm going to have two types, and you guys know what those are. There's the SDP, and then there's the PDP. Procedural due process and substantive due process. Now you give a little rule for these also. Okay, so give you a little rule for these quickly also. After that, we're gonna go into, is this guy a fundamental right? Or is it a non-fundamental right? So you need to read the facts and see on that fundamental right or non-fundamental right. If it's a fundamental right, remember it's strict scrutiny. Burden is on the government. It's a non-fundamental right, remember it's the rational basis test and the burdens on the challenger. So that one's done. Now, if it's procedural due process, we do the rule. Remember, there's two stems to the rule. There's notice. So hard to write with these pins. Notice and a hearing. Okay, notice and a hearing. Now, uh, remember after that, you're going to balance the factors, the individual interest versus the government interest and you give your conclusion. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I mean, it's easy, quick, and fast. Um, due process, you go into your simple rule, you spread it apart, is it sub you do your substance due process first. Um, is there a fundamental right involved or is there not a fundamental right involved? Fundamental rights involve strict scrutiny, non-fundamentals are rational basis test, burdens on the challenger, uh, PDP, procedural due process, give yourself the rule, do notice and hearing, and you're, then you're going to balance the individual versus the government and you make a conclusion there. That's uh, pretty much it. Now let's go back to my regular screen. Okay, so here we go. Let's go to our approach again. I do these for every con law one. We need to know all of our main issues. And in our head, we should just automatically know what stems from these main issues. So J, S, P, S, L, L, I. J, justiciability, S, state action, P, power of the states, F, federal powers, L, limitations on state powers, L, limitations on federal powers, and right now we're working on our individual rights, okay? So you should just know automatically just disability should pop up mootness, ripeness, 11th Amendment, um, advisory opinions, things like that. You just gotta be able to pop it out and state action, what's involved, what are the powers of the states, what are the federal powers, what are the limitations on the state powers, what are the limitations on the federal powers, and what are all your individual rights? So that's, this is just the basic approach to just jot down really fast, but you do need to know your inner issues too. Okay, well, that's it for on this video. We had our freedom of association and due process.
And we also have the 13th Amendment, the involuntary servitude. Okay, good luck on the bar exam and I'll see you guys on my next video.